Pixel 7 Pro. The Pixel 7 Pro is here and I am excited to share the first impressions about this phone in this short video and the full review with detailed pros and cons will come up very shortly. That video is going to help you decide whether you should buy this phone or not so stay tuned for that and be sure to subscribe to the channel. Now this is the Snow White variant I have here and man this feels so good to hold in the hands. It has the soft touch feel to it with all these rounded edges, curved back panel and front glass it is so comfortable to hold and when we keep it on a flat surface it doesn't wobble because we have this raised aluminium bar which runs from edge to edge on the screen and this gives it a distinctive look as well. Anyone who sees this device would instantly know that you are rocking a Google Pixel 4. Suddenly this camera bump is very very unique. It's a three camera setup on the rear and a selfie shooter in the punch hole which has this animation when you try to unlock your phone because now we have face unlock on the device. If the face unlock is set the punch hole expands to indicate that it is trying to recognize the face. The aluminium case runs on the edges and melts with the camera bump seamlessly which is cool but you won't notice it if you are going to use a case on it. Anyways now coming to the buttons we have volume rocker and power button on the right, a sim card slot on the left, USB type C port at the bottom along with the speaker grills. The bezels around the phone is thin but not as thin as the S22 Ultra. Of course the comparison video will be coming up soon so stay tuned. Now coming to the display it's a 6.7 inches LTP with 512 pixel density offering crisp and clear viewing experience. However, the brightness on this phone is again a bit of a concern only when we compare it with the likes of S22 Ultras or the iPhone Pros. If you are switching from these phones to pixels then you may have some issue with its brightness levels. Otherwise the display is pretty good for the price. This is a 12 GB RAM and 128 GB memory variant out of which only 13 GB is used by the system as this runs on stock Android. Talking about Android this phone comes with Android 13 out of the box and it is eligible to get 3 years of major OS upgrades and 5 years of security patches. This is good but we know that Samsung offers 4 years of major upgrades on their flagships and some mid ranges as well. So the question is why can't Google offer a minimum of 4 or 5 years of major Android upgrades. Let's reserve this topic for the future videos. Now this chipset on the device is Google's own Tensor G2. Yes, this is a flagship chipset. It's built on a 5 nanometer architecture, not on the 4 nanometer which are available on the other latest flagship phones. But in real life, is it going to make any difference? Let's wait and see that in upcoming speed test video. Now coming to the cameras, we have got 50 megapixel wide angle, 48 megapixel telephoto and 12 megapixel ultra wide lens and they take some amazing images. I did take a few videos and photos and they looked amazing. The selfie shooter here is 10.8 megapixels. Both rear and front cameras can record 4K at 30 and 60 FPS. I will talk more about the camera quality and how it performs when we compare it with the S22 Ultras or iPhone 14s. Perhaps in the review video we are going to talk more about the cameras. Apart from these hardware features we do get some cool software features on this phone as Google announced during the launch. We got features like AI image background noise remover, object eraser, inbuilt VPN at no extra cost which will come to Google Pixel phones in the future, RCS messages, Pixel Call Assist, Clear Calling feature which will suppress the background noise using machine learning, Computational Photography to provide real tone images, New Guided Frame for blind and low vision users, Photo Unblur feature which is going to be available only on 7 and 7 Pro, Cinematic Blur with Shadow Depth of Field with 10 bit HDR for brighter and clearer videos, better autofocus and better stabilization. We are also getting 4x optical zoom, super res zoom and zoom stabilization 15x onwards. These are some amazing features which we are getting on the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. It definitely needs a separate dedicated video to talk about all these features. The phone packs a 5000 mAh battery with 30 watt fast charging support, fast wireless charging support, reverse wireless charging which is amazing. Of course expected from the flagship. I will test the battery life and charging speeds and share the results in a few days. We also get IP67 dust and water resistance on this device. We have stereo speakers on the phone but I am not really happy with the sound quality on this device. Now the most interesting part is the pricing. This flagship device is priced at $899 in the US, $849 Euros, and about $73 
50,000 rupees after bank offers in India, which translate to 890 US dollars, which is a surprise here. Though it's an imported unit in India, it's been priced marginally less than US pricing, and we can see the strategy here from Google. They have got the Google Pixel 6a launch price wrong here, but looks like they nailed it with the 7 Pro pricing here. Now, is this phone a good buy or not? I will discuss with you about that in my next video after using it for a few days. Stay tuned and stay subscribed. This is the first impressions of Google Pixel 7 Pro. Thanks for watching. This is Salyan signing off. Cheers. Bye-bye.